Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Nelson. I want to give you just a little background on global warming and climate change. The world is getting warmer, and it's because of the increase in carbon dioxide from the burning of fossil fuels. CO2, carbon dioxide levels, have risen from 280 parts per million to over 417 parts per million since the dawn of the industrial age. And it's all caused by the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas. We know this because the science backs it up. The best way to think about this, a simple analogy, is that each molecule of CO2 that's added to the atmosphere kind of acts like a feather in a down comforter. If you have more feathers in that comforter, that blanket, if you will, redirects heat from escaping from your body and keeps you warmer at night. Well, it does the same thing in the atmosphere, redirecting or trapping terrestrial heat, infrared heat, that would otherwise escape into outer space. And so as the world continues to warm up, that carbon dioxide is going to stay in the atmosphere for centuries. It's called its residence time. And in fact, the carbon dioxide emitted from the gasoline burned in the first Model T cars is still in our atmosphere, causing the Earth to get warmer. Global average temperatures have risen about two and a half degrees Fahrenheit in the last 70 years. And that increase is because of the increase or the change, if you will, in chemistry in the atmosphere. And that CO2 is going to stay there for a long time. But if we don't make any significant cuts in our emissions, we'll continue to see a rapid rise by 2100 in global average temperature. And with that will come a lot of problems from increased temperature, extreme precipitation, both drought and flood, sea level rise near the coastlines, water, uh, wildfires, drought conditions, powerful hurricanes, and decreased ice and snow across many parts of the country, including in our Colorado Rockies. We're seeing that in our Colorado jewels, our national parks. We're seeing warmer temperatures already. And look at the projections. I'll step out of the way here. Without significant emission cuts, we are going to see temperatures in Rocky Mountain National Park by 2100 that will be rising almost 10 degrees from what they were in 1925. Mesa Verde, similar long-term warmer temperatures. We see it at the Great Sand Dunes National Park and as well from Black Canyon National Park. These are pristine, beautiful areas in our state that will change dramatically because of climate change. Now, in last summer, 2021, many parts of the West and the North saw their hottest summers on record. And over the last uh, uh, 80 years, we've seen uh, records increase by decade. 89% of the records that are set, we're talking record highs, record lows, are now hot records. Let me show you a global picture. This is the summer of 1936, and this was global average temperatures for the summer. Now took it summer of 2021, and the only spots that were any bit cooler down a little area in Antarctica and a little tiny area south of Greenland, and that was because of the melting of the ice on Greenland's uh, large areas of ice caps. Now, we are currently at 417 parts per million. This graph is a little complicated because what we're doing is we're taking each one of the measuring stations around the world, and with the change in season, of course, the atmosphere kind of breathes a little bit. It takes in carbon dioxide to grow plants and then releases it in the full of the cold season when the plants start to die off. But if you take the average of all of those, it continues to rise every single day. And with that, we're seeing more fires because we have the wind, the heat, and the dryness. That all adds up. We have more fire weather days that are occurring. We have more fire weather days across the entire region. And we're going to see more days with temperatures above 95 degrees in the Denver area. A dramatic increase. 15 more days compared to 1970. Those are super hot days. The yearly sum of days with average temperature above 65 degrees, which is your, your air conditioning, we're seeing more and more need for air conditioning. A lot of people said, hey, when I was a kid, we didn't need air conditioning here in Colorado. But across not only Colorado, but much of the nation, uh, we're seeing many more homes that are built with air conditioning because of the heat. So temperatures have risen about two to two and a half degrees Fahrenheit in the last 140 years. And we can identify the isotope or the chemical signature of the carbon dioxide. So we know it's not from volcanoes. It's from the burning of fossil fuel. And look at this. Just what we've seen in the last 100 years, the rate of increase in carbon dioxide at 417 parts per million. That's the highest global average in 3.6 million years. Other areas around the world, the Arctic ice is shrinking. We're also seeing those dramatic pictures of the, the big ice breakups down in Antarctica as well. But look at this shot. This was in 1980, the Arctic sea ice. Look at by the fall of 2020, and that sea ice continues to be younger and easier to melt. 
Dark water absorbs the sunlight energy rather than reflecting it like ice would. That's causing the northern hemisphere to warm even faster at the higher levels. And the hurricanes are getting stronger on average. Hurricane forecasting is a little more tricky. A lot of things are involved in that, but in general, more heat in the ocean increases sea level rise, also gives more energy for those storms. So record setting wildfires, heat waves, drought, shrinking Arctic ice, increased tropical activity. It's all part about climate change. I'm going to step out of the way here. This is my new little book on climate change and it, you can get a free download. It's 10 facts in 10 minutes on carbon dioxide. Just go to that IP address and you can get that free download. And please take the 10 to 15 minutes to read our little book on climate. I really appreciate your time.